In this video, I will show you how to track conversions with Google Ads and Google Tag Manager. This will help you measure which ad campaigns perform better. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to the Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where I teach people how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to stay up to date with GTM, then consider subscribing. Conversion is an interaction that is important to your business. For example, a purchase, a sign up, or something else. So if you are sending paid traffic to your website, you must know which ads are more effective and drive more conversions. So let's take a look at how you can track conversions with Google Ads and Google Tag Manager. When it comes to conversion tracking, first you need to think about what is the end goal of that particular Google Ads campaign. If you're running ads and people land on your website after they click those ads, what is the action that you want those users to take? Let's say that I am running an ad campaign and I want people who land on my website to subscribe to my newsletter. In other words, they have to land on this page, enter their email address and then subscribe. So in this case, the conversion can be the moment when someone successfully subscribes. To get started, first we have to go to Google Ads and create a conversion because that will provide us with some additional parameters that we will need to include in Google Tag Manager. So in Google Ads interface, click on Tools and Settings, then in the Measurement section, click Conversions. Then click New Conversion Action, Website, and then you will have to enter the URL of your website where you want to measure conversions. I can, for example, enter the URL of the homepage of the website and then click Scan. If you haven't configured anything in your Google Analytics property that is running on the website, you will see something like this, where you can just enter conditions of when that particular conversion occurs. For example, if the website visitor is redirected after the subscription to the URL that says slash or question mark thank you or something like that, then you could configure the following configuration right here. You can enter subscribe because that's the action that my website visitors should do, or at least I want them to do. And then I can enter the condition when that conversion should be counted. So I could select URL contains, enter URL, and then I could enter something like question mark, thank you. And then I could add that. So this is one scenario. Then another scenario looks like this. So let me just go back and start again. And then I will enter the URL of a website where Google Analytics 4 is already configured. Let's enter it, scan it. And since I am the owner of that Google Analytics 4 property, then Google Ads is capable of seeing that I have already two events, which are purchase and they can be imported from Google Analytics 4. So instead of configuring tags in Google Tag Manager, you can just select that you want to import that conversion or actually that conversion event from Google Analytics 4 and then Google Ads will start using that data. But if you do not see any suggestions right here coming from Google Analytics 4, or maybe your conversion is not related to page URL, meaning that you cannot distinguish that a conversion occurred based on the URL of the page, then you have a third option, which is create conversion actions manually using code. And that's where one of the options is to use Google Tag Manager. Even though I get suggestions to import conversions from Google Analytics 4, I will go with this option. And actually, I've seen many Google Ads and PPC specialists do the same thing because if you track conversions with Google Ads, Google Ads should get more data and more conversions attributed to that particular platform. Therefore, Google Ads will have more data to optimize against. So let's create a conversion action manually. Click right here. And then we need to select the goal and action optimization. In that case, we're talking about subscription. So let's click subscribe. Then you can name this conversion name. This is purely for internal use. So you can enter here whatever you want. Let's say subscribe form or something like that. Then you can configure how Google Ads will calculate the value of each conversion. If you know that every new subscriber is worth, let's say $5 or 5 euros or some other currency for your business, then you can select this option and say that, well, this conversion is worth for our business 5 euros. If every time the value of conversion can be different, then you should select this option. But I will explain how to work with this part later in this video. Or you can select that you just don't want to track the value. All you need to know is the number of times that particular conversion was made. 
So right now, let's say that I will be using the first option and every new subscriber is worth five euros. Then you can configure how Google Ads will count those conversions. For example, if in the same session, somehow the same person subscribes to the form twice, would you like to track both conversions or just one? When it comes to conversions like email subscriptions or downloading something, I would say that it's enough for me to track just one conversion because I don't care if the person subscribes multiple times. What is important to me is the fact that the person converted. Then you can configure these three options, but I will not be explaining them in this video. If you want to learn more, you can just expand every one of them and then learn more by clicking this link, for example. And then we have attribution model. So if you have multiple Google Ads campaigns running in your account and a visitor can click one ad, then another ad, by using some machine learning algorithms, Google Ads might decide that not necessarily the last clicked ad will get the credit for the conversion. Google Ads might decide that maybe the click before the last click was actually responsible for the conversion. But if this option is not available for you, then usually people select last click, which means that the last clicked ad, and I mean the ad in Google Ads account, it will get the credit for the conversion. When you have configured your settings, click done, and then click save and continue. Now you are asked to add tracking code to your website. At the top of the page, you will see three options, which is to add a particular code, which is called GTAG, so your developer can add this code to the website when that particular conversion occurs, or you can email instructions to the person who runs your website, or you can use Google Tag Manager. And that's the option that we are going to use in this video. So now let's go to Google Tag Manager. In this video, I presume that you already have some knowledge, at least basic knowledge about Google Tag Manager. If not, then I will post a link to a tutorial where you will learn the very first steps of how to get started. In the tags section, click new, then tag configuration, and then click Google Ads conversion tracking. Then if you don't have the conversion linker tag, you will see this suggestion. So you can just click create right here, name this new tag conversion linker, and then click save. Then you have to enter at least conversion ID and conversion label, and you can find them in the interface of Google Ads. Here is the conversion ID. You will see it once you have selected Google Tag Manager option, copy it, paste it, and then you need conversion label. And here you will see the conversion label that looks something like this. Obviously in your case, the value will look slightly different. So copy it, paste it, and then we have to enter the condition when this particular tag should fire. But right now we don't know what exactly to enter here because first we will need to inspect how that particular form works. So right now let's skip this. We will come back to it later. And here we can enter that name of the tag. I usually name it like that, Google Ads conversion. And then let's say the name of the conversion, which in my case is subscribe form like that and click save for now. Then click save tag. Now we have to inspect how this form works. We have to check what happens on a website when we actually enter the email. But to do that, first we have to go to the preview mode of Google Tag Manager. Click preview and then enter the URL of the website where you want to test this. So in my case, I'm working with my Sandbox website, so I will just enter the URL like this and click connect. Now let's enter an email, click the button, and here I am on the success page. And if I go to the preview mode of Google Tag Manager, I will see this event. Now, the reason why I see this event is because I asked a developer to push data to a thing called data layer, which is an essential part of Google Tag Manager. So when the form was successfully submitted, a developer pushed this event and some additional information. If you have no idea what data layer is, then I will post a link to another tutorial below this video. But what you need to keep in mind is that this event is not something standard that is available on every website on every form. This is something that a developer did specifically for this page and for that form. So now I have this event, which is called email subscriber, and I can use this as a part of my trigger in Google Tag Manager container. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, triggers, new trigger configuration, custom event and then enter that event, which is email subscriber. This is case sensitive. Again, if you have no clue what is happening, watch that data layer video and I will post a link to it below this video. Let's name this trigger and then click save. Now we can go to tags, 
and open our Google Ads conversion tag. And in the triggering section, I can click anywhere or on this pencil and then select that email subscriber trigger. So when on a website this occurs, our Google Ads tag will fire and it will send the conversion data to Google Ads. Let's save this and let's click the preview to refresh the preview mode and we will have to submit the form once again. So now I will enter my test data, I will subscribe, then in the preview mode I will see a new email subscriber event and here I can see that my Google Ads conversion tag has fired. Once that is done you can go to Google Ads, click done. Here is my conversion action created, right now there are no conversions. To start seeing some other status right here, you would need to actually click on your ads, then complete a conversion on your website, and then within hours, you should start seeing a different status. But it is normal even to wait for 24 or more hours. So when you do that and you see that your conversion tag has fired, then the next step would be to publish these changes on your website. And you can do that by clicking this submit button and then clicking publish right here. After that moment, this combination will go live to your website visitors. But what if you want to track conversions where conversion value can be different in every case? For example, maybe you want to track purchases. One visitor might purchase for 10 euros, another visitor might purchase for 100 euros. So it would make sense to send dynamic values to Google Ads. Let's take a look at another example. Here I have a demo page where I will click this purchase link right here and then I will go to a thank you page where I have purchased this watch. Let's take a look what happens in the data layer when I do this. I will go to Google Tag Manager. By the way, I have already closed the preview mode tabs in my browser. So now I will click preview and it will open a new tab once again. And now I will enter this URL of my sandbox e-commerce page. Click connect. I see that my tag assistant has connected and now I will click purchase. Here is the success message and here I have an event called purchase. So again, I asked a developer to push the purchase data to the data layer. And the bare minimum that is useful here for Google Ads conversion tracking is currency and value. Why? Because if we go to the Google Ads conversion tag, here we will see two additional fields, conversion value and currency code. Oh, and actually transaction ID. That one is also useful. So to insert some values right here from the data layer right here, we have to create data layer variables. Let's start with the conversion value. So I will click this button and then I will create a data layer variable that will access the value which is right here. So I will click plus, variable configuration, and then data layer variable. Here I have to enter the name of the parameter from the data layer and that is value. But value is inside of purchase and purchase is inside of e-commerce. That is why I have to enter e-commerce.purchase.value. If you want to learn even more about the data layer, for example, these more complex data structures, then take a look at my Google Tag Magic course for beginners. I will post a link to it below the video. So let's enter e-commerce purchase value ecommerce.purchase.value and let's enter it right here. Click save. Now let's enter transaction ID. So click this button again, click plus, variable configuration, data layer variable, and then I will create a variable for this, which is transaction underscore ID. ecommerce.purchase.transaction ID. Let's name this variable. DLV here stands for data layer variable. That's the naming convention that I follow click save and then currency code. If you are operating in one currency, for example, euros, you can just enter it like that. But if you have some information in the data layer, for example, here, you can create a variable, which is e-commerce.purchase.currency. Again, keep in mind that in your case, the structure in the data layer might be different, or maybe you don't have anything in the data layer at all. Then you will need to use some other techniques to access the data. And there are plenty of them. And I teach a lot of them in my Google Tag Manager courses. So let's click this button, create a new variable, which is again, data layer variable. And then I will enter e-commerce.purchase.currency. And then I will name this variable, click save. All right, looks like we are good to go. However, this conversion label right here and conversion ID are using the data of the subscribe conversion action that we have created. So in this case, if you're tracking purchase, you should create a new conversion action click button right here, then click website, 
then again enter the URL of your website. For example, I use this one, scan, then create conversion actions manually using code. Then I will select purchase because we are tracking purchases. Then you can name this just purchase or maybe something else. And then the value in this case will be different because we are going to send the value dynamically with Google Ads conversion tag and GTM. So you should select this one. And here you should select the default value because basically this is like a safeguard. If for some reason, for some transaction, the value is not sent, you have to enter some default value. Let's leave this as one euro for now. Then when it comes to purchases, I definitely count every conversion. Even if the same visitor makes multiple purchases, then I definitely want to track all of them. Then let's click done and then click save and continue. Now let's choose Google Tag Manager again. The conversion ID will be the same, but conversion label will be different. So let's copy this conversion label. I will paste it right here and then click save. Now let's click preview and make a purchase once again. Click continue, then I will make a purchase. And then in the preview mode of Google Tag Manager, I will click purchase event right here. And for some reason, my tag did not fire. And yes, I realized that I forgot to update the trigger. In fact, it would have made sense if I had created a different conversion tag for the purchase. But right now, let's pretend that the subscribe form never happened. So I will just enter purchase instead of that previous tag. And here in the email subscriber trigger, I will change its condition to purchase. Click save. So as a result right here, my container will have just one conversion tag, but it will be tracking purchases dynamically. If you want to track both subscribe form and purchase, you would need to create a copy of the Google Ads conversion tag and then add different conversion labels for subscribe form and for the purchase. Click save and now let's reload the preview mode by clicking this preview button. Click continue, then make a purchase. And when I click purchase in the preview mode, I see that my tag has fired. In fact, there is one more way how you can check if the request was sent properly to Google Ads. And that is with the extension called Tag Assistant Legacy. I will post a link to it below the video. Once you install it, you will need to click enable and then make a purchase once again. So now I will just refresh the page because let's pretend that I have made another purchase. And here I will see my Google Ads conversion tracking. And if I click it, I will see my conversion ID, conversion label, conversion value, and conversion currency. I see that the tag's status is green, so it means that everything is fine. In fact, I can also switch to URLs, then switch to the table view, and then I will also see another parameter, which is OID, in other words, order ID, and its value is what I have in the data layer, which is this one. So this is the order ID that I sent with my tag to Google Ads. And that's it. When you make these changes, don't forget to publish your changes by clicking this submit button and then clicking the publish button. After you publish your changes and you collect data for a while, let's say for several days, for a week, then you can go to places like campaigns in your Google Ads and you can then see a list of campaigns that are running. And then you will see how many conversions did you get from each particular campaign. And then you can also check other reports such as keywords or ad groups, and you can see what is working for your business and what is not. If you don't see this column, then you will need to click columns, then modify columns, and then include that all conversions column right here. So this will include your primary and your secondary conversions. If you want to see only primary conversions, then you will need to make sure that the column of conversions is also included in this report. And again, you can do that by clicking columns and then modify columns and then select the conversions column. And that is how you can track conversions with Google Ads and Google Tag Manager. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.